everybody. Yay, good morning. Happy Saturday. Yeah, bright and early. And at least it's pretty blue skies now. Yay. But we're supposed to have snow on Monday. Yay. <laughs> That's what I want. And all right, at least four or five inches. That's ideal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So today we have Chris Eichner back with us. Yay. We are super excited about that. And she's going to be doing these absolutely amazing thread paintings. Mm -hmm. She's doing some really pretty sparklies. I love it. Yeah. So we're going to be learning this whole technique today. And so let's see, a couple of announcements. So we have this event today, and then next Saturday we have our scissor sharpening event. Um, that is done by um, Terry. I sharpen it. Yep. Terry at I sharpen it. So bring by scissors during the next week or so, drop them off, and they do require payment ahead of time. You can find the price list at isharpenit.com, and uh, they will be sharpened next Saturday and then returned. And then I think we've got something planned for Stitch Witchery next Saturday as well. Yes, we'll leave that a surprise for next right week. So cute. I might be doing another one. <laughs> yeah, it's adorable. Mm -hmm. Good and easy. And then um, we are also doing a, so before Santa Pals, because we couldn't do our traditional stash bash, we are doing an auction. Nobody has bought raffle tickets yet. Please buy raffle yep. tickets. We have beautiful quilts and a needle felter and a quilt stand. And it is a solid wood heavy quilt stand. And at this rate, if we don't sell many raffle tickets, that just means you're more likely to win. Exactly. So where can we find that, Bethany? You can find that on our website, astralcottonco.com. Go to the shop page and go down to Santa Pals Raffle. Yep. Raffle for Santa Pals under shop. And it is amazing. We love the Optimist Club. They are one of our absolute favorite people to support. They are open until Christmas Eve. They give the parents like points and they go shopping with this point so the kids actually get stuff that they would be interested in rather than, hey, here's a bag of toys, hope something works. Yep, so we, we try to help them as much as we can, even yep. if we can't have an auction in person and this year. And about a lot more people who, are, other people are like, yeah, you're a little bit above the poverty line, you're fine. Mm -hmm. So they'll help out more people. And this year, everyone needs the help. So Amen. we're trying to make them as much money as possible. All right, so I think Miss Chris <clears throat> is ready. And Yay! Take it from here, love. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, what I'm going to be demonstrating today is how to thread paint on an already prepared panel. And so we're using Winter Cottage, and this is just part of that panel. And I believe I have nine of this left if anyone wants to do the same one. And this is it. Three of them done. I love it. So. In a wall hanging. I don't know how much we can tell on camera. We can tell it's thread painted. It's sparkly too. I love yeah. it. Amazing. I love it. And the so fluffy much. little birdies. And what I'm going to talk about first is how to prepare birdies. your uh, piece in order to thread paint without having uh, a whole lot of puckering going on. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take, cut one of your little panels out. Uh, leaving a margin around it as much as you can and then you're going to sew on the sides and on the whole perimeter of it these extensions because it makes it much easier to manipulate when you have it under the machine and after that you're going to put on a fuse and stitch by Sulky and Bethany's going to show that. I'll give you your Vanna today. Mm-hmm. So is this ours that we've got for sale right now? No, no. no. <laughs> we can get this though. Good. And so what you do is you press it on the uh, panel, extending out a little bit onto your extensions that you have on here. Um, the way you press this on is you use a very hot iron and you lift, you press and lift, press and lift, don't iron it. And uh, it takes about a 15 second hold per press and lift. And all of these instructions, I have three pages. Chris is so kind to offer this for everyone. <laughs> and what you can do is uh, email me and I will uh, send you the instructions for this class, which is free of charge. And for the 25th person, you are getting a wonderful $25 value gift from Sulky of America that has to do with the thread painting. Right, so what's and your email address? Chris, C-H-R-I-S-E, 
e i c h n e r at gmail.com so you'll be getting a package of fuse and stitch and you'll be getting three of these gorgeous new polystar threads these are beautiful from and they do not break they do not shred they, they do so not give you tension problems. They are my favorite, favorite thread of hey. all of Silky Thread. So everyone that's uh, interested, email Chris at the email that she just gave. We'll also write it out once the video is done. Uh, email her for instructions on this. And the 25th person to request it will get that prize. Yes. <laughs> and um, here's a close-up of uh, some of the thread painting that I've already done. And I began with the birds. And then I did a little bit of the thread painting in here so that you could uh, see this close up exactly what it looks like. And this is what it looks like on the back. So when you see little dots of color on the back side of your piece, that is normal. If you see a whole lot of thread, top thread coming to the back side, it means that you need to increase your upper thread tension. If you see a lot of bobbin thread coming to the top side, that means you need to decrease your upper thread tension. And the reason that you do that is because those discs hold those tensions taut or a little bit looser. At least I think that's my understanding. <laughs> yes. And today I promise not to bloody my finger. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... The preparation for this I've already spoken about. Um, the hoop that I use is a uh, six to seven inch German uh, wood embroidery hoop. And the reason that I chose that is because the width of the hoop is about three eighths of an inch. And it has a screw on the back. And so you can tighten your work, which is very, very important. You need to make sure that your uh, piece is flush so it doesn't get caught up on uh, your table that you have. And it should be tight as a drum. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to get started with the lightest color of uh, 24? Yeah, 24. Okay. And we're using a uh, free motion uh, foot, which is also called a hopping foot. Uh, so the first thing you're going to do is lower your feed dog teeth, which I have done. And we're going to fill a bobbin. <laughs> oh. oh, Julie's watching and she loves you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we're going to fill a bobbin with a 50 or 60 weight thread and it should be cotton or cotton silk finish on top. And just make sure you use a very uh, good quality thread. Uh, you can start off with a neutral color like a light gray uh, because we'll be using um, the lighter shades at the moment. When you do use a color that is a dark color like a red or a navy, you might have the bobbin thread coming up to the top. Therefore, it's important that you uh, change the bobbin thread to a red or to a blue or to a dark gray. Uh, that would work fine. You're also going to insert a 9014 metallic needle. And the reason I chose that for today is so that I don't have to be changing needles from my 40 weight uh, sulky rayon thread to uh, the metallic thread. There's also a needle called a metallic needle 9014. Uh, I have inserted a Microtex top stitch needle and that will suffice. Uh, you also need to sew on the side of the margin I always do this, uh, I sew on the side mm -hmm. of the margin of the uh, hooped piece so that I can see whether my stitching is 
uh, correct or not before I go on. Mm -hmm. And you can see on the reverse side here the little dots of color and that of course like I said before is normal. And I have extended the fuse and stitch out to the edges so that I could have these margins to sew on without having to ruin uh, the panel itself. And that is a very important thing to do. Every time you're switching from a particular type of thread, if you're using a 40 weight rayon thread, uh, you'll want to do that little sample stitching. And then if you change to a metallic thread, you're going to want to do the same. Because each time you change, you may have to adjust your upper thread tension, which I spoke about in the beginning. And it is also very explicit in my instructions. Um, you're going to select a straight stitch. You're going to take one stitch and bring the bobbin thread to the top. Sew a couple of stitches and then immediately clip those um, stitches. Thank you, Bethany. You're and I use these little snippets. They're I wonderful. Uh, and I know Robin sells them here. Mm -hmm. And they're fabulous. And you can get very, very close to your piece when you're snipping the stitches. We actually sell some. I have the two little pink ones that match the purple of this machine. Those nice. are my favorite little bitty scissors for snipping anything. They're so sharp. Mm hmm. <clears throat> purple. Is this purple? It is. Well, yeah, it's like a, it's an anodized metal. It's mostly purpley pinky. Oh, exciting. <laughs> I might have to go home with this. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to hit the heel of my foot on the uh, gas. <laughs> <laughs> so she used the uh, kickback on this machine that brought the needle down and up. Okay, so I'm in the needle up position, needle up position, which is what I want because when I'm going from place to place, I don't want to have to bring my foot up again. So I'm going to take a couple of stitches and then I'm going to cut those two top threads and you always start on a bird with the breast feathers first because that's under all of the outer feathers mm. and because this is all yellow in here or various sh shades of yellow I'm going to start with the yellow and what you'll do is you'll kind of follow the form. Now I can see right now that my bobbin thread is coming to the top. That's why you do that little sample on the, <laughs> on the side. So Bethany, if you'll um, lower my... Okay. Oop, that's up. Yep. Oh, up All direction. right. So I'm lowering my thread tension to 4.5 and of course on each machine that you uh, use, you'll have to look in your manual to see what the normal and what the lesser degree tension is. So here I am. I will say that with thread painting there are no mistakes. You can always go over it with your thread. And I don't want to cover too much of this beautiful fabric, so I am going to leave spaces. And as you can see, I'm moving my hoop in order to accommodate the growth of the feather pad. And I'm going a little bit into the red area, and my thread tension is still too tight. That's better. Nobody has said it yet, but we probably can't hear you talking over the machine running at the same time. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So I'm going to raise my foot and look to see if there's any other pieces where there's yellow here and there is not. And change my thread. And by the way, I'm using what is called a thread director. And the thread director is one of my best friends. And the reason being is, is because this thread comes off in a straight line and causes uh, your thread not to wind like a corkscrew coming off in a horizontal thread position.
and having uh, a needle threader on your sewing machine is just a wonderful thing. Now if you'll notice I am not going to bring my bobbin thread up to the top again because it's already there. I am just going to hold it out of the way and start sewing. When I say hold it out of the way, I mean when I say hold it out of the way, I mean I'm just pulling it toward the right so that there's a, a bit of tension and it won't come bouncing back up. So now I'm sewing uh, the rust colored or orange, if you will. And when I need to move over to this side, I'm going to raise up my presser foot, which releases the thread tension. Look in your manual and to see which hopper foot they recommend. As you can see, I'm going up into the yellow a little bit so that it doesn't appear that there's a line. I want to slow down my speed. It's a little bit fast, especially when I go to the metallic threads. You'll definitely need to slow your speed down. A little too slow. Okay. So I'm going to check my notes and uh, I do have have written down a stitching order and so uh, I am now going to choose white and since I'm unfamiliar with this machine and not having used it before I am having a little bit of an issue with my uh, bobbin thread coming to the top even though I've lessened it so much so uh, Bethany do you think mm -hmm. that it, up some more. okay mm -hmm. um, and I will say once we are done broadcasting this video live it takes about five minutes to process and then it'll be up so that you can start it back from the beginning pause as many times as you like uh, also, again, if you email Chris at chriseeichner at gmail.com, she will be happy to send you written out instructions with all of the details about all of the thread. And uh, Sulky is actually so nice to be.